these really events out there. We might call them the controllers rather than the watchers, but what's your description of the watchers? Who are they, and what are they watching, and who? Well, you know, it's sort of a double, it's a play on words here, because we're looking at the uh, the watchers from the Book of Enoch, um, and, and they are, they're the holy one, the watchers. In other words, these were, these were the angels, and sometimes they were good, sometimes they were bad, depending on, you know, wh- which portion you're reading. But we're also, we're also watchers here. Um, on Earth, like right now, I consider myself a watchman. I'm always looking at uh, breaking news, what's going on, the uh, global political climate, which obviously is uh, through the roof right now with what's going on in Libya. And then we look at you know the volcanoes, the earthquakes, the tsunamis, uh, <clears throat> the fish and bird die-offs, and all the other craziness, the, the volcanic activity that we see happening. And it's just to me, it, it's extremely alarming. So I watch this, and so it's really a play on words. Well, I consider myself a, mod- uh, a modern-day watchman. Mm-hmm. Um, specifically in regard to ancient uh, pr- prophetic texts and how they are, I believe, actually manifesting on the planet. Mm-hmm. So it's um, it, it, the times are absolutely unprecedented and extremely fascinating. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that's it, Lynn, isn't it? I mean, the world events we're seeing now, um, the, the the natural disasters, the uprisings in the Middle East, the mm-hmm. wars in the war mm-hmm. zones, the the war that's just started in Libya. Um, the the succession of um, seismic events we've had over the past few years, um, it's all connected to one event, don't you feel? Well, I think it's, you know, we've called it, talked about this before, but I truly believe we are looking at the acceleration um, of what is known in, in prophetic circles or prophetic parlance as the birth pangs. And um, this is what we see, and, and those are very, there's a lot of specificity to those birth pangs, wars, rumors of wars, famines and pestilence, earthquakes in diverse places and troublesome times. And, uh, you know, before 2010, I would say it was business as usual. Last year, it's, it's, it began. And other, other, uh, watchers, uh, people that, that look at prophetic pulses, whatever, mm-hmm. uh, would say the same thing. I was recently on a program with three other <clears throat> researchers, all of us. There's no collusion between us. We were all po- po- uh, asked the same question. Are we in the birth pangs? In other words, this, um, this, when a woman gives labor, those birth pangs happen quicker and quicker and quicker until she gives birth to something. And that's what I think we are. Those other three watchmen that were on this program, uh, concurred that yes, this is the beginnings of the birth pangs, and that was in the beginning of 2011. So I think we're in this thing for a while, and what we see is an acceleration of world events. It's happening so quickly, and the aftermath, <clears throat> what people don't get, it's like, okay, we, we get the, uh, Australian floods, got it. But they're still cleaning up from that. Uh, it hasn't stopped. There's a million people living in tents in Haiti. Now the cholera uh, outbreak is, is threatening there. Uh, the Gulf oil spill. Where did, where did all that oil go and the cortex go? I mean, we're still weeping. But see, we forget about that. Oh, that, that, that was last summer. No problem. No. Uh, talk to the people on the Gulf. Talk to the people who are making their uh, livelihoods for the fishing industry. Go to Christ Church that had a, uh, you know, a, a 7.8 earthquake or what, an 8.2 earthquake a few weeks ago. They're still cleaning up. And of course, we look at the tsunami, the earthquake, a 9.1 earthquake. There's those numbers again. 9.0, 9.1 earthquake in, in Japan followed by the tsunami. Um, that's that cleanup, and, and then it's compounded by the nuclear reactor, possible meltdown, Chernobyl-like. Uh, scenario, we're looking at, it's off the hook. I've never seen it like this. I've never seen it like this. Mm-hmm. I mean, I could go on. There's like four major calderas on the planet right mm-hmm. now. Yellowstone is certainly one. The Barabunga, which is the sister volcano to the Ayatollah Hoko in Iceland. Um, these are, these are super, super volcanoes. The calderas are like 40 miles, 35 miles wide. These things are huge. Mm-hmm. If this thing blows, it, it, it makes Mount, Mount St. Helens look like a picnic. It, it could turn, um, let's say Yellowstone. If Yellowstone is the Barabunga, there's one in Africa, there's one in South America. Mm-hmm. Any one of these things blows. Mm-hmm. It's like a hundred times what we see from the Eiffel Hokel. And it, you're looking at perhaps a nuclear winter-like scenario for maybe two years. Mm-hmm. Um, this this has happened before. I mean, we've had we've had um, when, when a volcano, a super volcano, has gone off like this. Um, it, it's created an enormous ash cloud, and that impacts the crops and the growing cycle. What most people don't get is the crops and the growing cycle has already been greatly impacted in the last two years, and what we're seeing now is the mm-hmm. rising food prices. Let me close this segment by saying this. The first, the riots in the Middle East were sparked in part by rising food prices. People couldn't feed their family anymore. And that's, that's what we're seeing. And mm-hmm. so it's, uh, it's coming here. Make no, you know, the United States, make, make, make no, uh, have no doubts about it. Mm-hmm. It is coming here, and that's why I keep telling people, stockpile food, stockpile food. Mm-hmm. 
if, you know, emergency rations, canned food, whatever, start yeah. stockpiling food and water. Lynn, Lynn, uh, does the does the spiritual guidebook allude to anything that may be construed as what some called, and I think the actual word quickening was maybe coined by uh, Art Bell years Art Bell, ago. Yeah. But uh, is there a quickening going on, or an, or an escal? Or, you know, is the quickening the same as an escalation of events? And is it in the spiritual guidebook? Well, the guidebook of the supernatural doesn't. It, it tells us there'll be birth pangs. It doesn't say, you know, these things are going to accelerate. I, I use the word accelerate rather than quicken, mm-hmm. but it, it's basically the same thing. There is a quickening. There is an acceleration of mm-hmm. events. Um, the, the, the Bible to the Supernatural mm-hmm. calls it the birth pangs, mm-hmm. and that's what I would stick with. And mm-hmm. so birth pangs happen quicker and quicker and quicker. Um, so, you know, a quickening and acceleration is, is certainly a, 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 an apropos word to use for what we're seeing on a global scale. And, you know, we didn't, we didn't even touch the financial markets which are in total upheaval, complete mm-hmm. upheaval. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the Japanese just got hit with this unbelievable, uh, uh, devastating earthquake, and now the Chernobyl-like uh, after effects from the tsunami. Mm-hmm. What most people don't understand is that the Japanese are bankrupt, literally. They, they, they mm-hmm. just print more and more funny money. Um, they mm-hmm. already are in debt, so much debt that it's, it's 200% of their gross national product. Mm-hmm. So, well, okay, <laughs> well, let, let me ask you, you know, tonight, as Andy full well knows, uh, is the night of, of the supermoon. Super moon. Uh, is that, uh, should we expect to see any kind of uh, a celestial event or a terrestrial event as a result of that supermoon? Well, there are geologists who have looked at this and said it is going to influence the tides, and all these all these um, uh, <clears throat> will bear pressure on the Earth on some level. Um, I never, you know, I I don't prophesy things. I don't say, well, you know, this is going to happen today. Mm-hmm. It, it's a type of a situation where, okay, super moon, this is sort of interesting. Let's see what happens. Hopefully, nothing will happen. I, I would rather have nothing happen. But apparently, you know, the moon this closer or this closer, or if it happens every eight years, there's nothing that, 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 that's, you know, completely anomalous. However, mm-hmm. uh, with all the recent earthquakes, specifically around the Ring of Fire, could this, in fact, trigger something we don't know? We'll just have to wait and see. Uh, I would, I would err to the side of, eh, probably nothing will happen, let's hope so, but one never knows. Mm-hmm. Well, Lynn, that, that fault line, the Ring of Fire, must now be severely weakened. So for for any other um, abnormality to happen, like a, an extra pull on, on on the Earth's gravitational field, um, I wonder if that weakness would that would actually just send it over the edge. Well, if uh, you know, people keep talking about California, Oregon, you know, the West Coast, and I have I, I had like a, a very very vivid dream, and I've gone public with this. Let me. Hey, honey, can you bring me a glass of water, a bottle of water? Live radio, got to love it. But uh, I'm partial. We just got in. I'm sorry I'm late, by the way. But um, uh, I had an extremely, thank you, I had an extremely vivid dream about six months ago, and I, I blogged about it um, and went public with it. And in that dream, um, I, I, and I know the beach house it was. I was there years and years and years ago. But I'm pretty sure it was the same beach house because I remember walking down the road to get to it. It's a very isolated beach house on a point in Malibu. Um, fairly close to where I live. I'm up in the hills. This is right on the sand. But it's on sort of a, a rocky bluff, so it's up. Um, it's not on the sand. It's sort of elevated, maybe 20, 30 feet above uh, high tide levels. And in the in this dream, which is extremely vivid, I've only had two of these, and one was, I know this sounds, it makes great radio, and I'm not making this stuff up. One was the Gulf oil spill, uh, where I, 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 same thing, I'm sitting on this, Standing on a concrete platform someplace, I have no idea where this is, looking out of the ocean, and the ocean's on fire. I mean, these flames are shooting out of the ocean. I'm going, what am I looking at? I had never seen anything like it before. And so I, I woke up, and I've got three witnesses to this. My wife, I told her, she had no idea what I was looking at. I called two friends of mine and said, this is the dream I had. And, uh, you know, they didn't know. And then two weeks later, literally two weeks later on the, on the uh, news, there's the uh, the Gulf oil spill with the rig on fire, on flame. I just went, oh my gosh, there it is. And this one has not happened yet, but I was, it was, I believe it was California. I believe I know the beach house. And I walked in to the first floor. There are Oriental rugs everywhere, well furnished, and I'm standing in about three inches of water. And uh, you know, the water's sloshing around, and it's uh, my my shoes are wet. And I look down at the patterns of the rug, and of course they're they're popping out because they're all wet. And there's a a fairly large burly man standing to the right side, um, and I and I call to him. And I say, "How bad is it?" And he says, "It's above the rafters on the first floor." And I go, "Wow!" And he motions me over to the window. We open up these blinds, and the Pacific Ocean is raging. I mean, raging. It's just nuts. And that was the end of the dream. 
So, um, you know, whether that's prophetic or not, we'll, we'll wait and see. Um, you know, some people say, well, the tsunami in Japan, it must not, it's not it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I w- you know, it, it's not it. This is, mm-hmm. I believe, was right here in California. Uh, Lynn, we have a question in the live chat. It says, uh, what credence, uh, or do you have any, would you lend any credence to the Kami Elowen, uh, passing at the time of this great catastrophe? And do you know what that is, Kami Elo- Elowen? Yeah, yeah, this is, um, this has been hitting the, uh, uh, on the internet. In fact, I read a, read a post on it um, either today or, or, or yesterday. <clears throat> um, again, you know, all these celestial objects running around and and doing things. Uh, when Halley's comet passed over thousands of years ago, or when they, you know, people freak out when they saw it. It's like, oh my God, it's the end of the world. And and some of these things do. Um, the larger bodies will certainly affect uh, the tides, but to what degree? A, a very minuscule amount. Um, so you know, what's interesting is is that, again, the guidebook of the supernatural will tell us there'll be signs in the heavens and in the earth. I mm-hmm. think we're seeing them in the earth. Mm-hmm. We're starting to see some in the heavens. Um, you know, the sun came up, for instance, two days earlier in Greenland um, mm-hmm. a few months back, and that's not supposed to happen. Mm-hmm. And you know, people talked about that for about five minutes, and then the story got mm-hmm. buried. You don't hear anything about mm-hmm. it. Uh, and, and it excuse was, well, maybe the global warming melted the glaciers, so, you know, the land mass is lower. Mm-hmm. What? Excuse me? Hello? Yeah, well, well Lynn, I'm, I'm, re- I'm playing that uh, trailer intro to your movie, and, and uh, what the folks aren't hearing because we're talking, then maybe we'll play it after with the, vi- with the audio, but in it, mm-hmm. it has a newscaster saying that uh, the uh, true north is, is off now, and you also point out that the moon, it looks like it's shifted. I mean, is there anything happening there? Well, we we have um, we're actually still trying to vet that. We have one Italian scientist. Well, let me let me let me back up. Uh, Richard, the uh, co-producer of the Watchers, we're working on Watchers too, which is called Signs in the Heavens and Earth. Yeah, that's what and, I'm playing. Um, what's interesting is he was the one that called my attention to the moon. He's going, my gosh, the moon looks just crazy. And sure enough, you know, we, we've been able to amass pictures, and the moon looks like it's rotated. Well. Um, here's the deal. Griffith Observatory, Pepperdine University, UCLA University, and the Jet Propulsion Lab uh, would not speak to us. Would not speak to us, would not address the issue, just dodged it completely. Okay, and that's some stuff of conspiracy theories. But we tried. Oh, look, oh, we just have a question. Does, is, is something wrong with the moon? Well, one thing led to another, and what we did find was an Italian scientist who we quote, who wrote a paper that was published on the Cornell University's uh, website, basically talking about uh, the eccentricity of the moon, of a lunar surface. Something mm-hmm. is going on. Mm-hmm. And we're, we are in contact with him. We are exchanging emails. He's in Italy. Um, but, uh, you know, we're exchanging emails and trying to get to the bottom. Something's up. I mean, he's, the guy's wrote a paper on it. Um, mm-hmm. He's a scientist. Apparently the lunar surface is doing something which is uh, sort of anomalous. We're not sure what. So, you know, all these things begin to add up, and it's like, you know, if you took one 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 of these items that we've been talking about in the last 10, 15 minutes, mm-hmm. okay, you know, it's an earthquake. We've had them before. You, you, we can get through this. But when we start stacking up all these events, you know, since just 2010, uh, is it business as usual or something more? And, of course, mm-hmm. I believe it's something more. Mm-hmm. Andy, do they uh, – is there any talk in, in the newspapers in England about these uh, uh, anomalies in space? Not that I've seen, and certainly not on the mainstream news. But you also, and Lynn didn't hear this, but you were also saying earlier uh, that they barely mentioned what the uh, what's going on in Libya. Is that what you said? No, no. The, the, the Libyan crisis has overshadowed what's going on in Japan oh, and nuclear it. power okay. stations. Yeah. Okay, so they're more concerned with what's happening in Libya rather than the tsunami that hit Japan. Yeah, at this time, mm. yeah. All right. Yeah, I mean, it's. I'm, I'm looking at the uh, <clears throat> the headlines with. Um, apparently, we shot 120 missiles in the in the Libya mm-hmm. today. So um, yeah. uh, here we go. We'll see what what happens with all this. Well, Lynn, Lynn are we going to see? Are we going to see United States get wrapped up in a third Muslim war? Well, let me let me take a slurper here of, of agua. Mm-hmm. Make no mistake about it. <clears throat> Uh, when, when Americans, when our, you know, the pundits stand up on a, you know, in the news shows and say, eh, the people in Egypt and Tunisia and the Arab world want democracy. Americans, when our, you know, the pundits stand up on a, you know, in the news shows and say, eh, the people in Egypt and Tunisia and the Arab world want democracy and blah, blah, blah. What, what will happen 
is the Muslim Brotherhood will eventually take over, and what we will see is some sort of a Sharia law, loose caliphate uh, put together uh, in the Islamic mm-hmm. world. There is no springboard to democracy like we have here in the West. It just doesn't mm-hmm. exist. Um, you know, there was no, uh, uh, first of all, there was no Catholic Church where the Protestant Reformation could reform that. And, and then second of all, from the Protestant Re- Reformation, people began to think. And you get the guys like John Knox and others, um, you know, who, who penned, uh, law is king, not king is law, which was, you know, huge back then. Mm-hmm. And, and what law are we talking about? And of course, from that stemmed the, the basis of this country, <clears throat> which was, which was, you can argue all you want about, well, it's a Christian nation, it's not a Christian nation. The mm-hmm. bottom line is it is, it was informed by, uh, men who <clears throat> knew uh, the Judeo-Christian Bible and and work from there and and what they penned was this that all men are created equal and have certain inalienable rights from the Creator. Now that directly, like it or not, stems from a Judeo-Christian worldview. Period. I mean, there's no no way to fudge that. Well, they don't have anything like that in the Islamic world. There's there's no springboard. Uh, all men are not equal. The mm-hmm. infidel, you can lie to the infidel, mm-hmm. and on and on it goes. Which is right. why we have freedom of religion in this country. Uh, of course, some of those freedoms can be used actually against us, but I, uh, I, you know, I, I, a little rabbit trail here. But the bottom line is, there is no springboard to get um, to a democracy or to a republic from from Islam. What they have is Sharia law. There's never been any uh, reformation in Islam. There's mm-hmm. just a strict adherence to Sharia law, which is, and that's what they fall back on. Mm-hmm. And a great graphic picture of this is in Tahrir Square in Egypt, when. Um, uh, the, this is before Mubarak stepped down. Mm-hmm. Well, when the Imam uh, got on the loudspeaker and called everybody to prayer, guess what? The the protesters and the military stop what they're doing, and everybody mm-hmm. starts down the Mecca. Um, that speaks volumes. The picture speaks of uh, you know thousands of words. Mm-hmm. What's more alarming is several weeks later, in back in Tahrir Square, when a uh, <clears throat> Imam who had been outlawed to speak publicly. <clears throat> by Mubarak and Mubarak's regime for, for decades, literally, addresses about 1.5 million people gathered in Tahrir Square. And they're all chanting, to Jerusalem we go, martyrs in the millions. To Jerusalem we go, martyrs in the millions. And of course, again, the guidebook of the supernatural talks about all of this, all these prophecies in the last days and how uh, a group of nations will come up against a land of unwalled villages, which is basically Israel, uh, after they've been regathered from the four corners of the earth, which is exactly what we see in Ezekiel 37, that's happened, mm-hmm. 1940, uh, 1947, so, you know, 1948, here we are. And it's all these things are beginning to pass. So I look at the Middle East and I am extremely alarmed. Who would have ever imagined six months ago that we'd be looking at the you know, type of uh, rebellion and, and, and anarchy in some places in these countries? And, of course, Yemen, Bahrain, uh, Saudi Arabia has not mm-hmm. tipped yet. Iraq is, look, Iraq is just a puppet right now. The United States is, is the only thing that's, that's popping it up. Um, and again, um, I would like to think, although I don't believe this for a minute, but I, if I was, if I didn't, if I wasn't such a conspiratologist, I would actually think that, that, uh, the United States, uh, think tanks got together and said, the, the next, you know, extrapolating, let's say, 20, 30 years in the future, and knowing the instability of the Middle East, knowing radical Islam and what it could be, they mm-hmm. would say, we need a base of operations right in the heart of the Middle East. Boom, let's go into Iraq. Um, that's one way of looking at it. There's another way of, of going. This whole thing is manipulated. Uh, the ancient city of Babylon is there. <clears throat> There's something else going on. And I've talk, I think I've talked about this on your show. The King of Jordan, the Luciferian dialectic, mm-hmm. Babylon, you know, this whole thing. So... I mean, if we can touch on that if you want to, but mm-hmm. I'll wrap it up by saying this. I am extremely alarmed at what I see. Remember, you know, we, we keep isolating these things. We're in the Middle East. Well, that's affecting the global economy with the oil and the oil, oil shortages. If the Straits of Hormuz and the Gates of Tears are closed, you know, oil right now is hovering about, you know, what, 105 or over 100 bucks a barrel. We could easily watch this thing shoot up if there's a major mm-hmm. conflict mm-hmm. to over $200 a barrel. Um, easily. And, and, Andy, how much do you guys pay for gas in the U.K. in uh, dollars? <clears throat> Um, in dollars, I can't equate to dollars, but it's it's touching now nearly two pounds seventy a gallon, mm. which probably I don't I don't know the exchange rate, but it's quite oh not two pounds seventy a gallon sorry two pounds seventy a liter, which is far less than a gallon of course. Wow. Um, so I, I don't know the exchange rate mm. now. I it's about eight or nine that. bucks a gallon. Right. Wow. Right. 
So how do you it's, get? It's, it's, a, it's a lot of money. But I do have a vehicle that runs on liquid petroleum gas, which is gas, which is far cheaper. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. You got a question there for uh, Lynn? You go right ahead. Yeah, Lynn. I mean, b- before you came on. Daniel and I were talking about bloodlines, the world elite. And I'm just wondering now, with the events in the Middle East, um, is there a Machiavellian hand behind everything, moving pieces as they would on a chessboard? Is, is there something we're missing here? Is, is there some overriding force that is controlling mm-hmm. events? Well, the short answer to that is yes. I, 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 of course, I believe that. There's been a, a, a Luciferian uh, satanic conspiracy for thousands of years. We're told in the Guidebook of the Supernatural, i.e., the Bible, mm-hmm. that in Second Thessalonians, which is just a, it was a city in in the ancient world, basically that um, <clears throat> the mystery of lawlessness is working. Now, this was written 2,000 years ago, and the end game is to set the Antichrist in the rebuilt temple uh, of, in Jerusalem to be worshipped as God. I mean, that's where all this. It sounds crazy, but that's where it's all headed. Absolutely, that's where it's all headed. And so, some of these people that are that appear one way are in fact look there's a dark brotherhood which is working behind the scenes um, and and I it is it is extremely Machiavellian I mean that's what we're looking at uh, just the fact that all of a sudden we're in Libya messing around with that now you know okay you know people talk about Obama being you know dithering not doing anything off in South America someplace in my opinion he's just a figurehead we haven't had a president here since JFK was blown away for three reasons. He was trying to dismantle the CIA, that's documented, trying to dismantle the Federal Reserve, which has nothing to do with our federal government. Our, our monetary system was hijacked in 1917 on Jekyll Island by a cartel of international bankers. It has nothing to do with anything. They took us off the gold standard. That's the power behind the throne. And, of course, the third thing he was trying to do was get us out of Vietnam. Eisenhower warned us of a military industrial complex. None of that's ever changed. We spent, what, 10 years in Afghanistan? How many thousands of people have been killed? The, the opium harvest mm-hmm. is over a trillion dollars per year, and on and on it goes. It's, um, it's war and rumors of wars. And it's just hysterical how, you know, be proud, and all these people are still, so many Americans are gung-ho and, and country and flag and, and the military. And, you know, I have friends in the military, and they're proud to be Marines and everything else. I get all that, and I think it's great on one level. On the other hand, the people that are controlling this thing, what are we doing in Afghanistan after, you know, nine or ten years? What is going on there? What are we doing in Iraq? I mean, there is no victory. It's just endless war, endless war, endless war. Mm-hmm. Hey, so, 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 Lynn, so, Lynn, there must be something in that region that um, our leaders want. There must be something there that they're looking for, or there must be a base of power that they want to sit on. And we're not getting the oils. God, what is it? Is it is it ancient artifacts? Well, it depends on who you talk to on that, isn't it? I mean, there's, there are people that are saying in Iraq, you know, stargates and portals and this and that. There's a, there's a couple of things, you know, this this global this global superpower. It's interesting that when we look again, if we look at the Middle East, and you would say, and, and going back um, to the time of Jimmy Carter when Khomeini took place, you know, our, our intel, you know, they know what's going on. And when we look at the map. Uh, Iran uh, is hedged in, literally, by you know, on two fronts by United States troops. On the eastern flank, it's Afghanistan. On the western flank, it's 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 Iraq. And we've got hundreds of thousands of troops in both places. It's really interesting that this is how it's it's shaping up. Mm-hmm. Iran wants wants to set up a caliphate in the Middle East. There's there's no mistake about it. Which is why the United States sold the Saudi Arabians billions of dollars worth of arms, planes, tanks, everything else, because they know. <clears throat> This animosity between Shia Muslims and Sunni Muslims has gone on literally for, for centuries. And the Shia, which has always been the minority, want the holy sites. They want the holy sites of Mecca and Medina. Mm-hmm. Something interesting, there was a Middle East map carved up uh, uh, by the Bush administration in 2007. Mm-hmm. Very, very interesting. And I talked about this when they invaded Iraq, that Iraq would be partitioned into three separate countries. And that's what this map has. I, I blogged on it and posted the map uh, on my blog several mm-hmm. weeks ago when I did it, mm-hmm. but what's interesting is is that the holy cities of the Islamic holy cities of, of Mecca and Medina are not part of Saudi Arabia in this map. They are now um, partitioned off as a separate country, uh, Islamic holy site country, ruled by who? Who knows? But you know, Iran's got its fingerprints all over this thing, and they are Shia, mm-hmm. and they want control. And a lot, some of the uprising in these countries are being fueled by Iran. 
and, and the and the Shia minorities mm-hmm. who have been suppressed and repressed literally for hundreds and hundreds of years are tired of it. Mm-hmm. And so that's part of this ancient schism between Sunni Muslim and Shia Muslim is now spilling over. And of course, you know, I would like to think that the United States think tanks and our intel would be smart enough to figure this stuff out, but frankly, I don't mm-hmm. think we are. So, you know, going back to Andy's viewpoint with the whole Machiavellian scenario here, when we look at Afghanistan, what do we really do in there? Well, the opium harvest is a trillion dollars a year. That's a lot of money. Mm-hmm. The opium harvest, say what you want, but the opium harvest is over a trillion dollars a year. Where's the money going? Uh, several months ago, the Rush, uh, there were some articles and in uh, Russian papers talking about there's a real problem now with heroin addicts because of all the opium coming into the country. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, where's all that opium coming from? It's mm-hmm. coming from Afghanistan. Mm-hmm. So now Russia is getting addicted. And, you know, we see this everywhere. It's just like our mm-hmm. southern border still remains porous, remain porous for, you know, decades and decades. No one closed mm-hmm. it. And so, you know, all, now we see the drug violence mm-hmm. and the wars going on across the border. Well, meantime, you know, in the United States, there isn't a person... In, that hasn't been the rehab. What I mean by that is, is every family in America has at least one person that's been the rehab. You know, go back 40 years ago, that didn't exist. You think we got a problem? Hello. They're, they are. It, this, and this is what's Machiavellian. This is deliberate. This is deliberate. Mm-hmm. Dumb down the people, keep them misinformed. Yes. And I'll give you just mm-hmm. one example. It's like the Middle East is exploding, completely exploding, imploding. Right? Uh, a week or two ago, before before the tsunami hit. And who did they who did they dangle up in front of the masses to look at? Who mm-hmm. usurped the stories? Charlie Sheen. I blogged about it. He's sending the clowns. Here's here's the latest guy we can all look at and gasp and wonder. You know, let them eat cake. This is the Roman circus all over again. And it, and it's to keep the masses dumbed down and stupid <clears throat> and looking at this ridiculous circus in front of us. <clears throat> and I feel sorry for Charlie Sheen, but he's just the pawn he's being is. And of course, <clears throat> his his story usurped what was going on in the Middle East, and did so until the earthquake hit Japan and the tsunami, and then, of course, all eyes turned to that. Well, now we see planes going in Libya, and and watch how they will uh, guarantee in the next mm-hmm. 24 to 48 hours there'll be some useful idiot that they'll throw up mm-hmm. for for the masses to look at and distract them from what mm-hmm. is really going on. Well, American Idol is another mm-hmm. another great Lynn, Lynn, let me ask you something, and this is going to go, segue off of Andy's question. Uh, and you mentioned briefly there about the theory of the Stargates. Of course, I've heard of Stargate theory, the ancient artifacts, you know, maybe searching for the Holy Grail. And then let's bring in the aliens because they're involved with it, too. There's an alien base somewhere in, I- in Iraq, and they're just meeting them. Uh, maybe they're stealing the oil. Of course, we haven't seen it, but whatever. But are, are these these sort of, um, uh, I don't know, aftermarket sort of uh, conspiracy theories, aren't they because people, are, and I know you must have, pontificated on this that people are making these theories up as wild as they might seem because this, the the events don't make any sense uh, and one of the one of those is of course as Andy suggested well then they're you know they don't seem to make mistakes make, make sense but perhaps behind the scenes somebody's moving the pieces and we're only going to see the end result of it and see the sense that it does make but but so much of it though isn't it made up because we can't Make sense of it, and 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 isn't there a danger of thinking, well, these are just isolated events, and we're assigning meaning to meaningless events, and the government hang, hanging on to their, you know, to their to, to the tail of the events, trying to act like they have control and, and they know what's going on, but they really don't, you know. So it, perhaps it doesn't mean anything. There's no end of the world going on here. There's no world takeover there's nothing happening but just random events that will continue forever i know you must have thought thought this out but have you passed that and said this can't be that this can't be that part well and I, and I blogged about that actually a bit last week um Toynbee, the historian talks about that history is just an endless re- repetition of cycles cyclical events empires rise they fall and they're predictable and that's very true you know we we all we all know that okay so Toynbee's right on one level except what we see is even though empires rise and fall, there is an escalation. There is an advancement. It becomes more and more complex. The world is wired together. And and, and if there is no supernatural, um, like with Sigmund Freud, Freud, did, well, Freud was, didn't believe in anything that was supernatural. Of course, Jung did. And so the, 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 the apocryphal story is Freud comes in mm-hmm. and wants to see a demonstration, mm-hmm. and Jung tells him, well, the book's going to fly out of the mm-hmm. shelf. And right when he mm-hmm. says that, the book flies out of the shelf. Yeah. Freud, apparently, according yeah. to the story, faints dead away. He's never seen anything like it before. 
that shouldn't happen. It's supernatural. Um, you know, Young was was sort of I would probably too strong of a word to say he was an adept, but he certainly was in touch with supernatural forces. The question is, what what supernatural forces was he involved with? And I don't think they were uh, benevolent. But here's the deal: when we, if if there is no supernatural, and if, there, if prophecy doesn't exist, then fine. I, I'm all down with Toynbee. In other words, I don't know if you guys have seen the movie Paul. We, we, we sat through it and was tortured for basically 90 minutes last night. It's one of the foulest movies I've ever had to sit through. But it's what I do and it's what I talk about. And I need to stay on a top of and abreast of, you know, of what is happening on all, on all levels as much as I possibly can. What's interesting is, is that this alien, um, there, there was a character in it who's a Christian and, and she's, uh, you know, the typical, or she's prayed very, uh, or portrayed very stereotypically. And then, of course, Paul, the alien, and when she sees him, she goes, oh, my God, you're a demon, and she falls on her knees and begins to see amazing grace. I mean, how silly is that, right? And, um, you know, the, the, she begins to argue with this, this so-called alien, and by the way, it's a gray. And um, even though it's, it's wisecracking and, and squares and curses and, you know, throws F-bombs all over the place and smokes cigarettes and marijuana, a very hip alien, when, when there are occasions when, you, when I just look at the, at the the drawing and to me it's incredibly malevolent looking now that's just my take on it but here's the deal the the alien saying there is no god there is no right or wrong no heaven or hell no no anything we all just evolved mm -hmm. and that's what we've been taught since you know since darwinism and if that's true then then history is meaningless it's just survival of the fittest and on mm -hmm. and on it goes forever and forever and forever okay i get that that's one world view that's not my world view the moment we plug in prophecy which we see is extremely specific in, in regards to Israel, which we talked about a few minutes ago, Israel being regathered from the four corners of the earth, reestablishing its ancient homeland. That's just one prophecy. We start stacking all these prophecies up, and I'm not talking Nostradamus and Edgar Casey and Blossom Goodchild and the Hopis and the Mayans. I address that in my upcoming book, hopefully, which will be out around June, called The Cosmic Chess Match. This prophecy is not 40% accurate or 60 or 80% accurate. It's 100% accurate 100% of the time. It never misses. And so that begs the question, where is it coming from, and can we trust the entity who's telling us this prophecy? Of course, in my opinion, we can, very much so. And what's interesting about this, this prophecy is telling us that it's not the end of the world. In fact, the History Channel last week called me up. They wanted me to be on this William Shatner thing, you know, the strange and weird show, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And they kept wanting to say, well, isn't this the end of the world? And I said, no, it's not the end of the world. It's the end of this system. The system that the world has been ruled under. You know, Andy talked about Machiavellian, um, <laughs> the Machiavellian forces um, that, are, that are behind the scenes, and I believe that there is a Luciferic uh, Machiavellian type hierarchy, which is pulling the strings behind this thing. It, mm -hmm. It's very dark, very malevolent stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, this war that's been in the heavenlies, in, in, this, in another dimension, in another supernatural realm, and I understand it sounds like science fiction, is about to sp is actually spilling over into this dimension now. We're starting to see things manifest like never before, and we're going to see more of it as time goes on. So history, in my opinion, I differ with Toynbee, it is cyclical in the sense that, yes, we do see empires rise and fall, but at the same time, history is moving towards a climax, and that's where we're going. Mm -hmm. It's not the end of the world. It's the end of the present system that the world is being ruled under, and a new system is about to take its mm -hmm. place. I'm just, I'm just wondering, then, how, how we, we spoke about the Antichrist a, a bit, or you, you touched on the Antichrist a bit earlier on. Um, do, do our world leaders know about this? Are they trying to put this d demonic architect into power? Have they got an agenda for this? Well, you know, it gets into some really weird stuff here, um, and, and you, we don't know, you know, who who are the real players. But certainly, um, the, when you get Alex Jones stuff and Bohemian Grove and other people who have looked into that, and and, and we see the um, even Ahmadinejad talking for a new world order. Uh, we see uh, in Europe talking a new world order. We see George Soros talking about the the slow de devaluation and collapse of the U.S. currency. I mean, what, what kind of a guy, is, to me, I mean, that's just how much how much more evil do you want to get? Talking about the slow dismantling of the American economy, uh, the system that we, we know, the, the crashing of the dollar, it's all being orchestrated. I mean, it's just, it's just puppets, these, some of these people that are, you know, 
Uh, Obama, in my opinion, is just a figurehead. It doesn't matter who we have elected. Just, he differs, he stands down, he does nothing. Um, and perhaps he's starting to see exactly what the office is about. Mm-hmm. Um, again, remember, they, they killed JFK, and they blew him away in Dallas uh, because of what he was trying to do. And people who were in power did not want to give up that power, and it's the same thing now in 2011. Mm-hmm. Um, we, are, we are escalating towards something towards a one-world order, a new world order, a one-world government, a one-world religious system. That's where it's going. What was interesting about the Paul movie, too, let me just go back to that, because it, it ties in with this, is that Christians were perceived as as, as backward, moronic, imbecilic, cro magnum type people. And the character that they used for this was this girl's uh, father, um, who yelled at her in a very gruff voice. He hadn't shaved in a week. Um, he had a Bible in one hand and a, a double barrel shotgun in the next, literally. Okay, and that's that's what people. And of course, the audience just lapped it up and laughed and poked fun and everything else. And the guy was really stupid and backwards and ignorant. And that's how Christians are portrayed. Um, and and what was promulgated literally was what I would term the alien gospel, uh, which is that ET created all life on this planet. Uh, everything just evolved. They genetically manipulated early man. Uh, they started the world's religions and started the world's civilizations. Now they're back at this critical juncture in human history to usher us into a time of peace, prosperity, and knowledge. And, you know, I've said this for years now, our priority before the event. So when the event happens, when, you know, it's not like the TV show, but when they actually begin to manifest, um, I've already said it. I've already called this out that this is what's going to happen. This is what they will say. And this is what the movie Paul is promulgating. And people just lap it up. It's just amazing. And it's some of the, I mean, the language was so over the top. And look, I'm, I'm no prude here, guys, but do I really need to hear an F-bomb every five seconds? I mean, is, I mean, can we write some other words? Are we that stupid, that illiterate, you know, ignorant and illiterate that we, it's just, it's just dreadful. Just dreadful. Lynn, After we, a while, you we sit have, there and go, oh, my gosh, I need a fire hose. All right, we have this question for you uh, from the Fast Blast from Kevin in Massachusetts. Lynn, what's your take on the radiation from Japan hitting the U.S. on the West Coast in particular? Um, lots of alternative uh, host, radio hosts have been ramping up the fear. Uh, that kind of reminds me, uh, you mentioned uh, uh, Alex Jones. Uh, in the year 2000, that guy was making a ton of money scaring people, thinking the world's going to end and they should buy all of his survival crap. Uh, he never did give them their money back because it never happened. Uh, he just went on to the next event, try to capitalize. I imagine he's selling iodine right now. Uh, so is is there a um, is there is there going to be uh, some radiation hitting America? Well, it, it's it's yeah, we're getting we're getting a, a bit of a spike, but it's certainly not harmful right now. <clears throat> On the other hand, if we get a meltdown like Chernobyl. Um, okay, it might it might be good to stock up on some pills. I mean, we already we already had that stuff. We had it. We've had it like for a year, well over a year, uh, just anticipating that you know it's going to hit the fan and do it now. I tell people constantly, you know, stockpile food and water, and you know, understand the times that we're living in. People don't want to hear that. Um, and then you get all these other people that are fear mongers and you know, quick go out and buy iron tablets and all this stuff, and you know, it's, the world's coming to an end, and. Uh, Look, I don't. I try to balance stuff. I mean, I really do. But what I'm looking at um, is that we are in tenuous, tumultuous times. They are the birth pangs, and things are going to accelerate. It's it's not going to get better, in my opinion. It's it's going to get worse, unfortunately. And I wish I was wrong on this. Um, and you know, I'm not I'm not selling food shortage, you know, food stuffs or anything. Like that. I mean, I'm, I write books and and we do DVDs to try to warn people. Um, you know what what's going on, but I mean we're not capitalizing by selling you know mm-hmm. uh, rations and all this other stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, and but we are trying to warn people that something is coming. Ancient biblical prophecies talk about the days. Look, let me just give you a couple of prophecies here, and I've said them before on your show. But you know, people listen to the stuff that's in one ear and out the other. And I haven't been on for a while, so here's the deal. <clears throat> this is exactly what these prophecies say that even the elect would be deceived, if that were possible, that men would faint from fear from what is coming on the earth, that unless those days were shortened, no flesh would survive, that the fallen angel, the fallen cherub, would come with all signs and lying wonders. You know, you start putting that stuff together, folks, and uh, that's not a happy little scenario here. So if those prophecies are true, 
And when and here again, when you see these things, what things begin to happen? Wars and rumors of wars, famines, pestilence, earthquakes in diverse places, and troublesome times. Uh, look up, because basically, I'm paraphrasing here, uh, the king is coming back, the second coming. There's the war in the heavenly. The book I'm working on, Daniel and Andy, is called The Cosmic Chess Match. And it talks about this heavenly war that's been waged for we don't know how many thousands of years. Mm-hmm. And we're told in the book of Revelation that Michael and the good angels fights with the fallen angel and all his cronies. And they are cast down from what I call the second heaven. And it says, woe to the inhabitants of earth. And get this, it uses three or four different names to, to, to describe what we call Satan. It says, Satan, uh, the, the fallen angel, the dragon, the accuser of the brethren, is cast to earth. And I'm going to paraphrase here. He's really ticked off because he knows his time is short. In other words, he's stuck in the time-space continuum. He no longer has access outside of time like he's had for millennia. Mm-hmm. Now he's stuck in the time-space continuum. He's really ticked off because because he knows his time is short. You know what? I'm really I'm glad that he's ticked off, and and it, wherever he is, I, there's something video for him. Hey, um, question come in from Ohio, Lynn. What do you think? Could the disaster in Japan been caused by harp? Well, like we keep hearing that. We hear that harp um, harp caused Haiti, mm-hmm. and there's no way to vet that. But you know, mm-hmm. I've, and I've watched that and read a bunch of different information on it. That the British fleet sailed out of those waters like three or four days before the earthquake struck Haiti, and that that British fleet had been there a continual presence since the uh, 17th century. So you know. Mm-hmm. That's an interesting story. Is there a way to bet that? Well, it'd be very difficult to bet that. But. Well, uh, can <clears throat> harp cause something? I, I want harp to cause some disaster. I mean, you know, a lot of people have been describing the effects of harp. I'm just, you know, can he just kick the thing in and cause some problems? You know, is it possible? Well, I think it is. Uh, we had, I remember seeing a, a video with Nick Bajic on a while back talking about what harp can do. Now, harp certainly can create earthquakes. The question is, you know, why would anyone want to create an earthquake in Japan? Here's something to consider. Here's something just to consider, okay? Um, and again, this gets back into the supernatural. In 2009, in November or December, right, somewhere in that, in that, I haven't gone back and looked at it on my blog, lamarzuli.wordpress.com. I blog six days a week, not on Saturday, but the rest of the days I blog. And I felt something had shifted in the heavenlies. You know what that means is in in my in my gut I felt something something uh oh something's up something's mm-hmm. happened something shifted it's not the same we're moving out of where we've been and some, into uncharted territory and mm-hmm. I blogged about it I wrote about it mm-hmm. and that was November or December of 2009 mm-hmm. sure enough 2010 things started to happen mm-hmm. okay and I wrote um, I, I blogged about uh, a story we, we're told in prophecy that. Um, that the, the man of sin, the Antichrist, in other words, the, the Luciferian agenda, uh, will not be able to manifest until he that is restraining him is taken out of the way. He mm. that restrains and, the and who is that? of lawlessness. Okay, that's, who, that's, who's, who's doing that's that? A 60, that's a sixty-four thousand dollar question. In other words, the mystery of lawlessness will continue to to try to do its thing, but Mm -hmm. you know who's restraining him, and will restrain the mystery of lawlessness. Mm -hmm. Just think of lawlessness. Just Mm -hmm. what is lawlessness? Just think everything Paul was describing yesterday in that Mm -hmm. movie is lawlessness. Okay, Mm -hmm. till the mystery of till he is taken out of the way. So who is restraining? There's people. Some people believe it's it's the spirit of a living God that's restraining, which is interesting. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't believe it is. In my opinion, it's, it's Michael. And um, he's he's the, the in charge of the heavenly army because he fights the fallen angel. We know that he fights the fallen cherub, the fallen one, Satan, and casts him down, um, you know, down to earth. What if? And this is just travel with me here for a second, and cast him down, um, you know, down to earth. What if? And this is just travel with me here for a second. There are portals. We know that there are gateways. The guidebook of the supernatural gives us a very graphic example of what I believe is a gateway, a portal, when the angel you know, appears to Daniel. He has got to go back and get reinforcements to get through to even talk to Daniel. It takes him 21 days Earth time to do that. Hmm, isn't that interesting? What if these portals and these gateways, and I address some of this in my upcoming book, um, what if Michael has has ordered an orderly retreat? 
And in doing that, he's now allowed what he's been able to restrain. He no longer restrains as much as he once did. And now what we're seeing, this is some some of this stuff that's going on globally, in my opinion, has the fingerprints of the fallen one all over it. Mm-hmm. And there are there are examples that we get in the guidebook of the supernatural. Mm-hmm. One of the oldest books is called the Book of Job, where we see exactly this thing, where Job um, destroys and it, or, or it's the fallen rather destroys Job's family by sending a violent great wind, a cyclone, a tornado, uh, calling fire down from heaven, which wipes out you know a, another part of uh, Job's holdings, shall we say. Um, it wouldn't surprise me at all if some of what we're seeing is not caused necessarily by harp, or you know people go, oh God must be bad eyes. Well, okay, I get that. You know, one billion aborted babies on the planet. That's that's a holocaust, but we won't go there. But what if Michael, the good guys, began an orderly retreat and allowed the fallen one to begin to do what he wants to do? And that's what I think we're seeing. All right. Uh, Super thought. Andy, you have a question for him? Um, yeah, it's just there is a whole lot going off in the world. And, and I mean, I, I've been looking at the, the continuous um, seismic activity and the continuous uprisings now in the, in the Middle East and the wars we've had and the social unrest across the world. And I've often thought, well, you know, there is something more sinister behind this. These, these are, although for... They all seem separate events. Even the different earthquakes and the volcanoes seem like a separate event. But there's a nagging thing in the back of my mind, Lynn, that it's not a separate event. It's it's all one event. It's all leading up to one event. It's all connected. Well, and I, Andy, I completely concur. It is all connected. That that's the whole point. It's it's exactly what the guidebook tells us will happen in the latter days. It's all connected. It's all extremely deliberate. Um, there are there are useful pawns on the face of the earth that are men and women that are willfully signed over to the uh, to the dark side, shall we say? And there are others who are not assigned to the dark side and are trying to fight this. I myself consider myself one of those guys who are trying to fight it and warn people. But I agree, it's all it, the strings are being pulled, absolutely, mm-hmm. and it's headed what? towards. This climax—that's where it's going. Mm-hmm. I agree completely. Uh, this 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 uh, person is, that's holding things back. You say it's a person, or is it? Is, what, what, let's crank that down a little bit. What, what, who who's restraining what? Well, there are. Let's say, for instance, let's just say that there are dark supernatural forces and good supernatural forces, and they have names, and they've been manifesting here for thousands and thousands of years, mm-hmm. and they're about to manifest even even more than what they have before. But this war in the heavenlies has been waged and for, for territory, for certain certain geographical er- areas, um, anytime you've got human sacrifice over an area where blood is being spilled in a ritualistic way, you're opening up gateways and portals. And that's unfortunately what's happened on the planet with one billion abortions, which is nothing more than a ritualistic, luciferian, satanic rite, because that's what it is. You're killing what more innocent life can you possibly take than an unborn in a mother's womb? Mm-hmm. Give me a break. And I realize that's a hot-button issue for people when they mm-hmm. freak out, but they've never examined it from a supernatural perspective, mm-hmm. and that's exactly what it is. Mm-hmm. It is, a, in my opinion, it is a ritualistic, satanic, luciferian blood sacrifice ritual. Mm-hmm. Um, and so you've got this going on, and... This is, is, is no different than what happened when the, uh, when the Mayans are sacrificing thousands and thousands of people and take ripping their hearts out. It's all bloodletting, and it's all for the same thing. It creates power for the dark side to manifest. They can't manifest unless, unless this, mm-hmm. this kind of bloodletting is happening. And this yep. is what, with one billion of them? Are you kidding me? And this is why we see what we're seeing. Yep. The restrainer, Michael and his good angels, are now pulled back in my opinion, and they are allowing the fallen one to manifest in greater ways. And some of this is because of the ritualistic bloodletting, which has happened on this planet. Okay. Uh, okay. You know, um, by, all right. By the way, a- Andy's getting ready to leave. He needs to uh, uh, attend to some things. Andy. Yeah, um, Lynn. It's been fantastic speaking to you again after all this time. Andy, always good to hear your voice, man. Hang in there and get better, will you? Yes, I'm getting better by the day, and I, I, unfortunately, Edges, I've, I've got to sign off now. 
because I do need to take some medication, unfortunately. Right. But it's been great to be back. It's good to be back into the swing of things. Don't forget to tune into EBN Reports, which is tomorrow at 6 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time on the UK Studio Channel. I'll sign off now. Right. Goodbye, Daniel. Right. Goodbye, Lynn. Take care, Andy. Thank good you. hearing your voice. Thank um, you. Okay. Uh, see you. Uh, Lynn, you, you were saying about the blood sacrifice and... Um, and uh, my question is, can you would you go back to 9/11 and say that might have been a 3,000 person blood sacrifice? Well, there are people that are looking at it that way. Um, you know, 9/11 to me is is the classic. Um, and I realize, you know, you, there are some people that you even begin to broach the subject, and it's like they look at you like you're a crackpot. Okay, let's not. All I know is, look at Building Seven, and no plane hit Building Seven. And it's made out of steel, and that thing falls at free fall speeds in less than 20 seconds, eight hours later. Baloney. Right. That's not, you know, we're looking at something. Right. And then, so we, it's, this is, I, and I blog about this, I call it the Luciferian dialectic. A dialectic is conflict, counter conflict, synthesis. The conflict is 9 11, the counter conflict is Afghanistan, and then we go into Iraq for some crazy reason, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you got weapons of mass destruction. Well, where are they? Well, Saddam had them, but he put, gave them to the Syrians, and they're up in the Bekaa Valley. Mm -hmm. That's where they are. But why did he go into Iraq? Because Babylon's in Iraq. And the third layer of a dialectic might be all this is, is, is as Andy was talking about, extremely Machiavellian, mm -hmm. extremely. And, and, and it sets up this whole one-world government system. You know, it, it, this is really interesting. <clears throat> the Iraqi dinar was, I think, four to one trade for four Iraqi dinars to one American dollar before um, um, you know the war happened in Iraq now it's like 3500 to one mm -hmm. so they devalued well, the dinar yeah and at some point it's going to revalue well their their version they have their own federal reserve now which was set up by guess who the same guys who control our money mm -hmm. and they created a counterfeit bill called the Iraqi dinar which is about 3500 to one. When the dollar tanks and the Iraqi dinar revalues, I know, just do the math. Mm -hmm. Well, now, just see, that, that, that kind of goes back to my earlier question because, uh, you know, nobody likes to be known as a kook, you know, or, you know, a conspiracy theorist, you know, as if everything is a theory and you're just, you know, look, you know, you have aluminum foil underneath your hat and you got an organ <laughs> blaster thing on your desk, you know, but, uh, so, you know, you, you look for something definitive to say, to point to, to say, look, I'm not crazy. I'm not making it up, this up. But when you say building seven, to me, that, that is, that is the quintessential stop calling. It's, it's the trump card. It's the trump card of conspiracies to prove that there is something going on that somebody is lying to you about. Right. You know, that, so therefore, you know, the, maybe the next thing you, you have conjecture about isn't so crazy either, you see. Well, you know, it, it, there, there, there's, two, there's two dynamics of 9-11 of, uh, events which mystify me. One is the Pentagon, and the other one is Building 7. The Pentagon, there is no plane that hit the Pentagon. Um, all those cameras across the street were confiscated by the federal government. And, you know, they've not let anybody examine those things. Right. Um, hmm. Uh, the early shots before the facade uh, fell, you see a round 16-foot diameter hole. Mm -hmm. That's all. There's no imprints of the wings. There's nothing. And the Duke University reenactment of that is just, it's just so much nonsense. They show the wings falling off on the exterior of the building and somehow disintegrating. Well, where are the, you know, where are those engines? Mm -hmm. Hello? They're yeah. not there. And in every other plane crash I've ever seen, the engines are very, you know, you, the, the, they don't melt. So we've been lied to, you know. And uh, it's just like the American, it's, it's, again, the American people see Charlie Sheen, Lindsay Lohan, how's O.J. Mm -hmm. doing in jail, uh, Lady Gaga comes out, comes mm -hmm. out of an egg, and, yeah. of course, the, the, the staple American idol. And is lady, goes, okay, and is, is down. this lady Gaga keep popping up in the news? You know, you you, you said earlier some of the, you know uh, an event's going to come up to distract us. You know, now this lesbian or, or homo, I can't tell what this person is. Is that a man or a woman? Gaga? Yeah, Gaga. I think I think Gaga's all female. There was one mm -hmm. picture I found on her. Um, 
without the wigs and the makeup and everything. And, and she and I just and that's the one I posted on the blog when I did a write up on her. Mm -hmm. But I just went, you know, this is what she looks like, mm -hmm. and she's hollow, and there's nothing there. There's just a shell, and mm -hmm. she's just an operative. I mean, you know, Gaga became became a household name, mm -hmm. and it it's how does that work when? And this is what people don't get. You know, oh Fox News, oh Bill O'Reilly, baloney. Bill mm -hmm. O'Reilly spends what fifteen minutes talking about Lady Gaga. Mm -hmm. Why would why would anybody in their right mind talk about Lady Gaga? Yeah, yeah. Why, she, why are we discussing her she, now? Yeah, she is because lecturing. All she is is a, a freaking useful idiot to draw people away. <laughs> you know, it's a useful distraction. That's yeah. all it is. And, and yeah. each one that they use, whether it's Brittany or Lindsay or or Charlie Sheen, becomes mm -hmm. more outrageous than the last. To right. keep people distracted. There you Meanwhile, go. the Middle East is imploding. There's food shortages, animal die-offs, earthquakes every, mm -hmm. you know, a 7.0 or greater on a weekly mm -hmm. basis now. Um, volcanic activity is threatening. The dollar is ready to collapse. The world instability. The Muslim world is absolutely going through the roof. Mm -hmm. right. And on and on and on. And what do they show us? How dare they? I right. mean, but, you know, unless the American people wake up, mm -hmm. and it's hysterical, oh, the Tea Party, the Tea Party, yeah. and Bernie gets up there and, you know, saves $60 billion, meanwhile they spend $170 billion. Mm -hmm. It's like, this isn't working, you guys don't get it. Mm -hmm. The dollar the is going to collapse, folks. There is going to be an incident on, in this country. Is it the New Madrid fault line? Is it California, huge earthquake? Is it is it a uh, dirty nuke going off or mm -hmm. the Yellowstone caldera? I have no idea, mm -hmm. you know, but whatever it is, it's coming, and right. people need to understand that they need to prepare. Mm -hmm. Don't go buy anything, and I, I have to sell. I don't care whether you buy my books or not, but I do care that you go buy a, buy a bunch of food and understand that you need food and shelter and water, and you need people of a like-minded, that mm -hmm. you know, people who are like-minded yeah. to be around you. Yeah. And do that all ahead of time. So when this stuff begins to happen, you got to plan. you got to mm -hmm. plan worked out. Yeah, that... Uh that the Gaga itch, itch, I leave the B out. Uh, she is uh, lecturing Congress right now to uh, pass uh, or trying to pressure uh, Obama into, you know, uh, eliminating every uh, reference to uh, marriage that has a definition of man and woman. You know, she wants to have, uh, you know, man and man, man and beast, man and sister, man and mother. You know, she don't care. Uh, man and dog. She's good with that. Uh, looks like she's had a few dogs in her time. So, you know, yeah, I mean, it's, uh, you know, but the, the people that, you know, you know, and, and here's, here's the thing, Lynn, I've discussed this with survivalists, those that predict sort of a, a, a cataclysmic end or an, uh, an anarchy catastrophe type of thing. The, the, those that have this food supplies that you're suggesting, which is an excellent suggestion, even the U.S. government suggests that you have a three day supply, but if you look at Japan, I imagine a lot of people on the, Coast of Japan, wish they had a few months supply now. No, I, I, no it's four to six months. Yeah, you know, well, that, that's what they're going to need. Months. Yeah, that's what they're going to need. I'm hoping that I'm hoping all those people are moving to their relatives on the good side of the island. But um, when society has to be rebuilt, and these Gaga followers, uh, low hand followers, come to your door for food, screw them, okay? Because tell them to go go, go seek Oprah's advice or whatever, what to do. <laughs> Because you don't want those people repopulating the earth. You don't want them repopulating nothing. Okay, these people should neuter themselves. Like Gaga, this Gaga itch with the bee, they they don't need to be repopulating nothing. They need to be, they, you know just have this where they stay outside with the roving hordes and let the roving hordes take care of business. But don't bring them in, or you're going to repopulate them. Next thing you know, we're going to have the Ellen Degenerate uh, show number two. You know, <laughs> coming back. You know, a reprise. You're going to repopulate them. Next thing you know, we're going to have the Ellen Degenerate. Uh, show number two, you know, <laughs> coming back, you know, a reprise in, in the new America in, when it's rebuilt. You don't want that. <laughs> do you? You don't want that thing coming back, do you? Well, when, what's interesting is when all this stuff starts to come down, it's a perfect opportunity to tell people about the prophecies mm -hmm. and about what's really going on and start to educate people and show them from the God Book of the Supernatural what's really happening. And, you know, even if they're you know, Gagaites or whoever they are. Um, you know, it's a perfect opportunity. And I'm not talking religion here, folks. I'm mm -hmm. talking about supernatural warfare, which is happening in the heavenlies, which mm -hmm. is spilling out on, into this dimension. That's what we're looking at, in my opinion. And, you know, eventually, it, 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 look, it, it's headed towards this one climax. It, it's um, the movie Paul uh, is, is a thumbnail sketch of where it's all going, mm -hmm. in my opinion. 
And, uh, you know, we're being indoctrinated. We're mm-hmm. being indoctrinated. Mm-hmm. And, and it's here. It's, it's, it's not that it's going to happen. It's happening right mm-hmm. in front of our noses. Mm-hmm. But most people are asleep. So, so you're not, Lynn, Lynn I, I feel like you're a resistor, okay? Are you, gonna, are you prepared to go into that blue or red line list there? Are you, prob- are you on a list now? <laughs> well, I don't know. Um, you know, we have not been contacted yet, which is really a good huh. thing. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I speak a lot. I'm on the radio, talk about people, talk about this stuff all day long. Mm-hmm. Um, my sphere of influence is probably not uh, <clears throat> potent enough to, to deal with. They figure that mm-hmm. if I'm influencing, like my blog numbers are about five, 6,000 a day that mm-hmm. come to the blog. Good. Well, out of, you know, 300 million people in America, that's nothing. They mm-hmm. don't care. I'm, I'm, I'm a small fish. Okay. Um, if I got real big, I mean, someone like Glenn Beck or, or Judge Napolitano, and I, you know, both of those guys are, are, you know, always, always hitting on the Federal Reserve, especially Napolitano. Napolitano pulls no punches. He tells mm-hmm. you straight up that the Federal Reserve has nothing to do with this country. You know, I mean, he's, he's adamant about it, livid about it. And so, uh, you know, all hats off to the judge. I mean, he's pretty amazing in that, in that regard. I mean, you know, I've, I've watched Fox News and CNN and everything else and, you know, I, I watch a, a variety of different news shows, and it's really fun to watch the spin that different different networks do. But mm-hmm. obviously, in my opinion, someone got to O'Reilly because his mm-hmm. show changed about two years ago, and now it's like, well, we have Culture Quiz and the Culture Warriors and you know, pa- Pinheads and Patriots. It's all it's all it's entertainment. It has nothing to do with anything, you know. And of course, he acts outraged and all this stuff. It's like I think somebody got to him. He was uh, creating too much of a dent, and mm-hmm. someone will get to Ben Beck at some point, and the Palatano mm-hmm. at mm-hmm. some point. Uh, uh, these guys mm-hmm. play hardball. What, what, what do you think and, about a What do you think about a Ron Paul Napolitano ticket in 2012? <laughs> It'll never happen. Mm-hmm. Hey, here's a question for you. And this is a great question because you, you're talking. Well, you may not be using the word. Uh, uh, the quickening, uh, but uh, there are definitely some things. Acceleration. Acceleration is working too. But man, there. I mean, the, the, you're right. The, the Middle East is exploding. If you just did a recap, real quick, the Middle East is exploding. You got the Japan quake. You got uh, Haiti. You've got uh, Katrina. You've got the meltdown of the American financial system. You got right. the Muslimization of the world. Uh, somebody wrote in the live chat. Then, what would be? What would you consider the the last? You know, because people aren't, aren't generally going to go out and buy food tonight, and they're probably not going to tomorrow. They they'll probably remember what you said and uh, go back somewhere in their brain that maybe they got to pick up an extra macaroni box and get one, get two instead of one. But uh, bef- before that happens, is there something that they can point to that you see coming that that is the last chance they've got to make these preparations? Is there anything that you could say? I will say this: that if there is a full a full fledged war against Israel from a combined confederacy of nations, which has been listed in the prophecy, which I've talked about on the show before, that would be the last straw. Okay, well, I'm somebody, not, somebody not, in live chat... I'm talking a skirmish. Did, you, did nope. you just check the news? Somebody was saying that uh, somebody's firing rockets into Israel today. No, that was just, that was Hamas. Hamas fired... Um, okay, well, that's their normal. Uh, that's their normal. About 50, yeah, about 50, 50 rockets. Who uh, are these Hamas Israel. guys? Can, can, we, can somebody please blow them up? Why do we have to even read about them? Well, I mean, there it is, and it's the whole Palestinian thing, mm-hmm. and that's why 1.5 million Muslims march in, in Tahrir Square, and they say, you know, chant in unison to Jerusalem we go, martyrs in the millions. That's, mm-hmm. you know, it's, it's, a, I blogged about this, Daniel. It, it, they don't care about creating a better infrastructure or creating new hospitals or jobs or education or women's rights. No, 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 no. All they want to do is kill the Jews. Let's go to Jerusalem. Die as martyrs for Allah and kill as many Jews as we possibly can and take back the Holy Land. Okay, great. Now what, guys? Let's say you accomplish all that. Now what? Now what are you going to do? Somebody, you actually have to have an infrastructure. You have to actually have an education. Mm-hmm. You, have yeah. to, you have to decide to mm-hmm. make something and be productive in life. Yeah. But they don't do that. Yeah. They're not interested in that. Well, now, if you, Egypt was the, the first, okay? They, they were the fire starter there. And I haven't heard anything because there's so much activity going on. These other Muslims are killing other Muslims. Of course, we're fighting Muslims in wars. They're fighting each other. You know, I mean, it's crazy. Uh, you know, maybe it's in their blood or whatever. Maybe they're all reptilians. But, uh, you know, what, what is the, you know, what, what is Egypt doing now? Are they, you know, I know they're going to have elections. The military said they'll have elections. So is that country stable now? No, not at all. It, 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 there is no stability in, in Egypt. I'll give you one example. Uh, before, 
uh, the uprising, there was a pipeline that went from Egypt to Israel and supplied Israel with 40% of its energy. 40%, 4-0, 40% of Israeli energy came from Egypt. Hamas blew up the pipeline. It has not yet been connected. When the Israelis um, began to talk to the, the, the whatever whoever is in charge of the Egyptians right now and asked if the pipeline would be connected, the Egyptians promptly said, no, we're not going to do that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so so it's so all changing. It's mm-hmm. all changing. That's huge. Mm-hmm. Martyrs we go. You know, to Jerusalem we go, martyrs in the millions. Mm-hmm. And every one of them like to be a martyr. You think... Are, are there enough virgins in heaven for them to all be marked? Because I understand they, they, get Probably sev- not. they get 70 each, so there's got to be a heck of a lot of virgins wherever the there's hell they're going. A lot of virgins running around. Where do they all live? You know, well, I, I think they need to re- rebuild the book or re- re- re-read the book or get somebody to interpret it for them because, well, rebuild it would be actually be a good one, too. Uh, oh, it seems to me, wasn't this, didn't this uh, talk show, uh, this com- comedy guy uh, just... Who is who's this guy? He's like an atheist guy, but it, the Comedy Central guy, he, he just said that the Koran was an evil book. John Stewart, yeah, that's who it was. Did you hear that? No, when, when did he say this? Just like a few days ago. And, of course, you mentioned Fox, and so I heard the news report on Fox. They were they played the clip, and he said, you know, the most hate-filled book there is is, is the Koran. And and so even I think even Bill O'Reilly, although I agree with you, he somebody may have got to him, you know, because, you know, this... Right. You know, these quizzes that he has popping up, you know, and, I know, you know, ridiculous. You know, he always have these bimbos on there, you know, it's yeah. like, dude, okay, you just looking at him or what? What you have, you know, it gets That's real. That's all news. it is. It's eye, ca- it's eye candy and entertainment. So, you know. There's no news there. But yeah, they played the clip and he's wondering why there's no outrage for what he said. You know, I, I, I don't know, but I just thought it's interesting to even say that. You would think because, uh, remember that, uh, that cartoon where the these uh, yeah, editors the cartoon. yeah they, they well no the, the the show like it was American Dad or something I mentioned this last week there was this mm-hmm. cartoon where the writers were going to have a Muhammad character but he they threatened to cut his head off the the oh, writers yeah, right, head right, right, right. so they you know they went ahead and blasphemy Jesus because that's cool you can get away with that like this new show called uh, uh, I don't know if you heard about Good it Christian bitches yeah so yeah. yeah so no that's okay yeah, you can right. have a show like that but yeah but don't talk about Muhammad you know. He'll take that towel off his head and he'll whack you. He'll he'll wet it and he'll flick it at you. You know what I'm saying? Well, that, and that's exactly what happened in the movie Paul. I mean, Paul is a blatant, blatant frontal attack against everything we hold dear as Christians. Mm-hmm. Absolutely everything. I mean, it's it's borderline blasphemous on on some level. And uh, you know, the thing is, it's like if Christians get all in a row, now everybody will go out and see the movie. Mm-hmm. So it's uh, you know that's unfortunate. Mm-hmm. But what again, it's promulgating what I call the alien gospel. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, it doesn't talk about prophecy. Christians are viewed as absolute backward Neanderthals. I mean, that's how they're portrayed. Right. And, uh, you know, I mean, I'm a Christian, and I don't think I'm a backward Neanderthal. Mm-hmm. I think I'm telling people exactly what is going on from prophecy, which is in that Christian Bible, folks. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Isn't that interesting? Well, you know, what, what's going to happen is uh, that that good Christian bitches, some, some, when it, if it ever gets out, the, the, there's going to be some preachers going to say, you know, we're going to have a, a lesson. We're going to learn, you know, and then they're going to be talking about, you know, do you? I can just see it, you know, they, they have a, a, a sermon on Sunday talking about the lesson learned from that show. You know, I'm just saying that's that, that's what the churches today kind of remind me of, you know, how they get their cue. You know, that's that's not the thing to protest. They would actually use it to help them, you know, to 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 build a membership or increase the the payout at the. In, in the bag there, but uh, <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, we're talking about your your DVD called The, the Watchers and Two. And uh, Lynn, how how can people get that? LaMarzuli.net, LaMarzuli.net. You can see the trailer for Watchers One, uh, and also we're taking pre-orders for Watchers Two, which is called Signs in the Heavens. Mm-hmm. Watchers One of UFOs are real, versioning not going away. Mm-hmm. Uh, we don't tell you what we think they are. Uh, we don't pontificate. We just show you the evidence. And it's great to sit down. And the reason why we went to film is because, you know, writing books is great, but it's only one person at a time. You show someone a DVD, 50 people can sit in the room and watch the thing. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden you get dialogue and people are talking about it. And this is episodic. Mm-hmm. We're working on two. Number three is on the board. And Watchers 2 should probably be out sometime in April, early May mm-hmm. at the latest. Mm-hmm. Um, and you can watch trailers for both of them by going to mm-hmm. lamarzuli.net. LAMarzuli.net, and uh, we're selling my cupcakes, and it's making a difference. You know, by the way, I want to ask you something about that that movie. You uh, you interviewed um, is that uh, is this Stephen Greer? 
No, Dr. Roger Lear. R- Roger Lear, yeah. Now, is he, is he, is he the guy taking out the alien implants? Yes, he is. Did you see those implants yourself? Yes, I held them in my hand. And, uh, how is, how is it that they track people with, with something that looks like a, just a piece of metal? Well, first of all, these are not tracking devices. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lear and, and I both concur on that. Um, these devices are changing the person's DNA, mm-hmm. is what they're doing. They are prototypes to change mm-hmm. a person's DNA. Mm-hmm. Um, they can track them. Uh, our, each person's DNA on this planet gives off a different frequency. Mm-hmm. And if you built a receiver, um, that, in other words, if you knew the person's DNA frequency, you could track them anywhere on the planet. Really? Yeah. Okay, so so once they have the information, what can be done against a person if they have that information? Well, if are you talking about if someone who's got an implant? What can happen to them? Right. What what's going on with it? Are they just well, we, we seeing think, how they live? Well, Lear thinks, and I think, and I'll drop a bombshell on your show here. I've been I've been gone public with this, and it, it has to do with prophecy and stuff. And this is, uh, you know, I'm, I guarantee your your people have not heard what I'm going to say in about two minutes, but. But here's the bottom deal. We believe that the that these implants are changing the DNA. They are not tracking devices. They are literally changing the DNA. So we've got four different prophecies, right? And and, and a lot of pro- and a lot of prophecy, people never think to overlay the prophecies. In other words, could it be that that two or three different prophecies given uh, that seem that are seemingly unrelated and given by different prophets over a hundred a couple hundred years, so there's no collusion between them. Could it be that they're talking about the same event from a different perspective? An example of this would be Psalm 22 and Isaiah 53, talking about the crucifixion uh, in, in graphic detail, happening hundreds and thousands, or hundreds, hundreds of years later in some cases, thousands, thousands of years later in other cases, from when these when these prophecies were first penned, talking about Yeshua, Jesus' blood sacrifice on Calvary. Psalm 22, Isaiah 53. Overlay them, same event. Two different prophets looking at the same event. With that in mind, in the guidebook of the supernatural, we are told it will be like the days of Noah when the Son of Man returns. Mm-hmm. Okay, what differentiates the days of Noah is the presence of the Nephilim, the fallen angels, which mm-hmm. we sort of touched on. Right. But another aspect of the days of Noah is longevity. People live five, six, seven, nine hundred years right. old. Okay, that's 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 the first thing. Mm-hmm. Then we go to the book of Revelation, and we find out, this one you all know, that uh, people will not be able to buy, sell, or trade unless they take some sort of a mark on the mm-hmm. hand or the forehead. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's interesting. Then we find okay. out later that anyone who takes the mark is immediately judged. There is, there is no, there's no repentance. There's no, um, there's no second chance. You take the mark, that's it. You're, 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 that, you're, you're done with. That's it. It's over. Mm-hmm. So you, once you take the mark, you're host, Okay. And the fourth thing we see is that men and women will seek death and not find it during, during the uh, time of the tribulation. We'll seek death and not find it. What are we looking at here? Okay, now you, now you take the Roger Lear interview with the implants, changing the DNA. That becomes the mark. This thing is about the size of a grain of rice, actually smaller in some cases. It goes underneath the skin. It changes the DNA. It, 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 so, in other words, and this is actually smaller in some cases. It goes underneath the skin. It changes the DNA. It, 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 so, in other words, and this is all speculation, but this is where I think it might be going. And all these prophecies I just man, mentioned are all fulfilled in this little chip from ET when they show up um, after some sort of cataclysmic war in the Middle East, and they will say they will do two things. They will offer us gifts. The first gift will be a free energy source that will replace the oil. Free energy, like cold fusion, okay? Amazing, mm-hmm. amazing, amazing. Some sort of anti-graviton type device mm-hmm. that uh, which renders cars and everything else completely obsolete, mm-hmm. right? Okay. The second thing that they will give us will be a chip which will extend our lifespan to 500 years disease-free. Really? People would line up around the block for that. And that's mm. what I think the mark of the beast is. Really? Awesome. That is a bombshell. Changes the DNA, expands the life, mm-hmm. and you will not be able to, you won't be able to die. You won't be able now, to die. Who's, who's going to argue with that? Some Neanderthal in a church somewhere? <laughs> Somebody who's not watching good Christian bitches? There you go. <laughs> but you know, those, those quacks, those quacks won't take it, okay? 
neither will grandma. Grandma don't like it either. No, so maybe maybe the Obama Obama health care go ahead and euthanize her. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? One, one, of the, one of the death squads, they know. What do they call the death death? Uh, yeah, exactly. Death panel, yeah. Death, death panels. Oh, I think we should live. How many people? Yeah, you know. No thanks. Sounds like sounds like Nazis to me. Yeah, and and, and the other thing I want to talk about real quickly on your DVD, you, you talk about the bird deaths. Uh, uh-huh. What do you ascribe that to? Well, we don't know. There's all sorts of theories with that: methane mm-hmm. gas, harp, mm-hmm. um, you know, being used. Uh, mm-hmm. But it's global. Yeah. Whatever's causing it, it's global. Mm-hmm. In other words, it's just not along the, the uh, New Madrid fault line. Mm-hmm. I mean, the fish deaths uh, were in, in the millions mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. this year. I mean, literally. Yeah. In, in, mm-hmm. in the rivers of Bolivia, they were so cold that all this millions of marine life died. Mm-hmm. You know, we it, right here in Southern California, yeah. millions of sardines wash up in, at Redondo Beach. I mm-hmm. mean, it, it ain't going away, is it? You see, I've never seen anything like this, ever, 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 ever. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing. When you start, if it's just one incident, I don't mm-hmm. say a word. But we we start stockpiling or start building the, the case brick by brick, which is what we talked about tonight. You know, look at the Middle East imploding. Look at the volcanic activity, the earthquakes of 7.2 on a weekly basis. Mm-hmm. The the fires in Russia, 500 fires. Uh, the, An- the animal die-offs, Japan. right? Yeah, mm-hmm. the, the flood, the floods in Australia, the earthquakes mm-hmm. in right. in Christchurch, the the right. Chilean earthquake, the Haitian earthquake, the mm-hmm. Ifala Hoka volcano blowing. The sun coming up two days later, or earlier rather, in Greenland. The magnetic shifting of uh, the magnetic pole shifting 40 miles uh, from where it was. The Earth being blown off its axis last week by the 9.1 uh, J- Japanese earthquake by three or four inches, and on and on and on it goes. It ain't business as usual, folks. These are the birth pangs. Wake up, mm. study prophecy, understand the times we're living in. Wow. Well, I'll tell you what, we have getting near the end here, Lynn. Is there anything else you want to talk about or mention before we uh, call it a night? It's been power, power-packed and insightful, uh, block-busting interview once again with you. Well, I certainly appreciate you having me on, Daniel. And uh, all I can say is, you know, we, we're in very tenuous, tumultuous times. You know, I blog six days a week. Um, obviously, with the emergency stuff that's going on now in Libya, I'll probably talk about that tomorrow. Um, but it, 